In this video, part 3 of the ankle ligaments, we focus on the syndesmosis. Before we start off with the diagrams, let me just say that the injury of the syndesmosis of the ankle joint is an important injury. It's commonly known as a high ankle sprain, as opposed to a normal ankle sprain. And it's important because these uh, injuries of the distal tibiofibular joint have longer recovery times and longer return times back to play for athletes. So keep that in mind and give the syndesmosis always a good look in every MRI you have in front of you. So this is a view from the posterior of the ankle joint and we have some bony landmarks that we have to go through first. This is the lateral ridge of the tibia and it then separates into an anterior margin and a an posterior margin. In between it forms a concave groove here which is known as the incisura fibularis and basically in this concave groove the fibula is lying in this groove here and is stabilized already by some bony landmarks. Then again this is a view from uh, behind and a cross section here at this level and there are some other bony landmarks that you have to know. Basically we have Chapeau's tubercle here at the anterior aspect of the lateral tibia plateau or plafond here, so this is the Chapeau's tubercle and here on the back it's the Falkman's tubercle which is more commonly known because you often have these fractures here and you can have a isolated fractures also of the Chapeau's tubercle and this is then here again we have Chapeau's tubercle and there is a tubercle here in the distal fibula and it's known as the Wagstaff tubercle or Wagstaff Lefort tubercle and the anterior syndesmosis is basically connecting these two tubercles. Now this is again a view from the back and here we have the posterior tubercle. This one is the Falkman tubercle that I have already told you. And because this one is like a no man's land, there is no guy claiming this tubercle for himself. If we all agree we could start using the term Acton's tubercle here. And if you are uh, <laughs> in favor of this idea give the video a like. Now the Syndesmosis of the distal tibiofibular joint consists of three different parts. We have an anterior one, a posterior one and a middle one. And let's start off with the anterior one. So we have the anteroinferior tibiofibular ligament. The abbreviation is AITFL, not to be confused with ATFL, which would be the anterior talofibular ligament here. And then sometimes you have a thick ligament more distally and this is known as Bassett's ligament. Then we have here the posterior view again. Triangularly shaped is the posterior or posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. And it has two components, a superficial one and a deep layer, which the deep layer is running here more parallel to the uh, plafond and is then inserting a little bit more anteriorly than the other uh, insertions here of this triangle. This one we know already, I made a video about it. If you haven't seen the normal ankle ligaments, go click the link in your upper right corner or watch it after this video and have a look at the anatomy of these ligaments. And in between there can be to a variable degree an intermalleolar ligament. Sometimes it's long connecting the two malleoli with each other. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter and it can be connecting with each of these ligaments here. And it's interesting because this ligament seems sometimes to run through the posterior recess of the ankle joint. So if you see a ligament there, think of the intermalleolar ligament and don't get confused with a loose body or something like that. Then the third component is the interosseous tibiofibular ligament, which is the blue one here. And it's running from the tibia to the fibula in an oblique orientation from proximal to distal in this orientation and everything above is the interosseous membrane. And keep in mind that sometimes the orientation of this ligament, depending on the reference or literature, is the other way around, and I think it's a mistake. Um, let me just show you this here in one of the most recent publications in skeletal radiology, where you can see the orientation of this ligament is basically wrong, and I will show you later in a patient how the orientation should be like this and not like this. Let me show you how I identify the ligaments. I typically start on a coronal sequence and then you can go from distal or from anterior to posterior and then you will see here the Chapeau's tubercle and you will immediately see these bands running obliquely downwards. 
down to the max depth tubercle on the lateral malleolus. So these are the fibers of the anterior band of the syndesmosis and you have some fat in between which is perfectly fine, it's normal and here we have a thicker ligament on the most inferior part and if you will you can call this a Bassett's ligament. You can also have a look on your axials if you start proximally you go distally then you can see here the tubercle and we have all these different fibers that are then running over here onto the fibula and here the lowest part which is quite thick, thicker than the rest and that's the Bassett ligament. The posterior one is not so good visible on or it's not easy to see on the coronals, it's better visible here on the axials and you can see here this broad insertion onto the uh, posterior tubercle and as we have learned it's now from now on called the actin's tubercle and then the ligament is running here over this one here, it's the posterior syndesmosis. There it is. Remember this diagram where the interosseous ligament is running from the fibula to the tibia, from proximal to distal, and now have a look here in a real patient where the ligament is actually running from the tibia to the fibula in a proximal to distal orientation. Now let me show you this in another patient where you can really see this much clearer here. So you can really see nicely see the ligament this time. So you have the interosseous tibiofibular ligament here, which is the lowest, most inferior part of the interosseous membrane. And everything above is the interosseous membrane. So this is also a very good example to show you all the other ligaments again here. And here we have a transverse section. We are above the ankle joint, tibia fibula, and this is the Chapus tubercle. And then you can see here really nicely these different parts of the antero inferior tibia fibula ligament or the anterior syndesmosis with fat in between running downwards. And then we have a, a guy which is a little bit late here. So this ligament is running a little bit late and deeper than the rest or more inferiorly than the rest. And if you will, you can name it a Bassett's ligament here. So this is a very nice example here. Then if you go above, then you can see that the interosseous ligament has different components here as well. And then here we would have the interosseous membrane, which typically is very thin. And if it's really thick, you should think of uh, scar tissue there after an old injury. Then going down here, and then you can start to see these uh, posterior ligaments very nicely also here from the Falkman tubercle or triangle down here inserting broadly into the fibula into the from now on called actin's tubercle and then this one is probably the deep layer and the other ones are the superficial layers but the distinction is not important so don't uh, try to uh, impress anybody in your report because you will probably not see um, separate injuries of the different layers anyways and it will also not have therapeutic consequences as far as I know. This is also a very nice example to show you an intermalleolar ligament. We start off on the lateral side here, then we go medially and what we then see are these different parts of the posterior syndesmosis here, this one here, okay, and then there just below the posterior one here then fusing here with this bands you can see a ligament like structure here that is running all the way across the joint and then inserting into the posterior aspect of the medial malleolus so this would be a um, intermalleolar ligament and I've seen more beautiful cases than this one here but it's just the one that I have to show you right now so here just to repeat myself you can start off with your coronals from anterior to posterior and then you see these different bands with fat in between of the anterior syndesmosis which is fine. You can also see this on your axils as I have already told you here is different bands never on one section only so you have to scroll through. Okay and then if we go a little bit more posteriorly then you can see these bands here of the interosseous ligament which are running from the tibia to the fibula from proximal to distal in this orientation and not in this as in the diagram that I've shown you. This interosseous ligament is also visible on your axis if you go high enough with your uh, field of view. These are these little dots here and then if you go further posteriorly in this direction then you will see this triangular shaped posterior part of the syndesmosis. 
here, this one here, and sometimes you have a very far anterior insertion which is referred to as the deep layer and then the superficial layer and then uh, the last ligament that sometimes is present is the intermalleolar ligament which presumably is this ligament here you will see it just here in a second this one here um, in the posterior recess so, what have we learned today? There are still anatomic structures that are not named after famous people, and remember the Actin's tubercle, for example. And um, just kidding, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you get notified every time I upload a new video, and also give the video a like, and leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or questions for me. And with that, see you next week!